السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله تبارك وتعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد Indeed, our praise is due to Allah. We praise Him, we beseech Him, we seek His forgiveness. We seek refuge to Allah from the evilness of our own souls and the evilness of our actions. Whomever Allah has guided, there's no one to mislead. And whomever He has led astray, there is no guide for them. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. He is one and He doesn't have any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is His servant and His final messenger. As for what follows, for indeed the most truthful of all speech is the book of Allah, and the finest guidance is the guidance of Muhammad ibn Abdullah alayhi salatu wasalam. And the evils of affairs with Allah and His Messenger are novelties in religion, nor newly introduced affairs into the religion. For every newly introduced affair into the religion will lead to innovation, and every innovation will lead to misguidance, and all misguidance ending places the hellfire. May Allah protect us from the fire. Ameen. From amongst the important things that every mu'min, wal Muslim, wal Muhsin concerns himself with is the issue of athabatu al haq staying firm on the truth. La siyama fi zaman fi zaman al fitan, especially during the time when there's much trials and tribulations that afflict <coughs> the Muslim ummah and the truth being attacked and bombarded from all directions. And many of us fear for our own children's Islam. No matter where you may be at in the earth, we fear because we see in these times that which we didn't see when we were younger from the elders. 
and we fear what it will be like for our children when they reach our ages. What will the Islam be viewed upon? How will the, our religion will be treated in the Muslims? What will be the state of the Ummah? It's going to be worse then than it is now, no doubt. Just as we see it worse today than it was yesterday. So this being firm on the truth is something that we should be concerned about, especially since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger said, alayhi salatu wa salam, inna qulub, that verily the hearts, bayna usbu'ayni min asabi'i rahman are in between two fingers, verily inna qulub al bani adam, verily the hearts of the sons of Adam are between two fingers from the fingers of Allah Ar-Rahman. So yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has fingers. But asabi'ahu laysa kam laysa asabi'atuhu laysa asabi'uhu ka asabi'i ghayri. His fingers is like no one else's fingers. And he said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the heart is between two fingers from the fingers of Ar-Rahman كَقَلْبٍ وَاحِدٍ Like it's just one heart. يُقَلِّبُهَا كَيْفَ يَشَاء And he turns those hearts as he sees fit. إِنْ أَرَادَ أَزَاغَ And if he wants, he will lead a heart astray. وَإِنْ أَرَادَ أَقَامَ And if he wants, he will keep a heart firm upon the truth. Sadaq Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the messenger of Allah has told the truth. So here, this reality is a real reality. It is none of us that keeps us upon al istiqam upon steadfastness. But it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the messenger of Allah, he said, Ya muqallib al-qulub, O changer of the hearts, thabbit qalbi ala ta'ala deenik. Make my heart stay firm and establish on your religion. Ya musarrif al-qulubi, O disposer of the hearts. Sarrif qalbi ala ta'atik. Dispose of my heart upon your obedience. And we should say this dua as the azwaj al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama wa alayhi wa radiyallahu anhunna. For the wives of the Messenger of Allah, Lama Su'ilna, when they were questioned, Ma kana akthar dua in da'a bihi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. What was the majority of the supplication that the Messenger of Allah used to make the most? Fil bayt, in the home. And they said, He would say, Ya muqallib al qulub, O changer of the hearts, Thabbit qalbi ala deenik. Make my heart be firm on your religion. Ya musarrif al qulubi sarrif qalbi ala ta'atik. O disposer of the hearts, dispose of my heart, dispose of my heart upon your obedience. Hakadha kana Rasulullah. This was the case of the Messenger of Allah. The one who was told he was in Jannah before he died. The one ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi wa ma ta'akhar. The one who was forgiven of his sins before he even did them. The sins he did already and the sins that he may possibly do later. And all of them were small sins. They were minor sins. And Allah forgave him, but yet he made this dua. وَمَنْ أَثْبَتُ قَلْبٍ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ Who has a more firmer heart on the truth than the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. مَنْ أَفْهَمَ لِلْدِّينِ مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ who has a better understanding of the religion than the Messenger of Allah? Man aqwa min nasi ala ta'atillahi min Rasulillah. Who is more upright upon the obedience of Allah than the Messenger of Allah? But yet he used to say the majority of the time in supplication, Ya muqallib al qulubi thabbit qalbi ala deenik. O disposer of the hearts, dispo I mean, O change of the hearts, change my heart upon your, obe upon your religion. Do we say this? Do we ask a lot of this? So being firm upon the truth, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm, realizing your guidance is in Allah's hands. 
from the things that keep you firm upon the truth, brothers and sisters in, the, in Islam, is and to taqi Allah, is to fear Allah, have taqwa of Allah, to fear Allah in all of your movements, to fear Allah in all of your statements, to fear Allah in all of your dealings and transactions, and taqi and to taqi Allah fi kulli harakatik, wa fi kulli sakanatik, wa fi kulli muamalatik. To, do, to, to be, be obedient to Allah be in every open public forum and in every private and seclusive forum and situation. To fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fearing Allah and taqwa as the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and taqwa ha huna, and taqwa ha huna, and taqwa ha huna. The taqwa is here. The taqwa is here. And taqwa is here and he pointed to his heart and he pointed to his heart because the heart is the king of our limbs and our body parts and that's why the messenger of Allah says either asbah banu Adam that when the son of Adam wakes up in the morning when the son of Adam wakes up in the morning that his body parts says to his tongue it's it's tongue to the tongue for Allah in regards to us. For Allah in regards to us. In Akamta Akamna. That if you are upright, then we will be upright. But if you are corrupted and crooked and astray, then we're going to be crooked, corrupted, and astray. Meaning this is what the body parts is saying to the tongue, meaning the heart. Because the tongue only illustrate what is in the heart. And the heart only illustrate what we feed it. From what we read, from what we look at, from what we listen to, from what we busy ourselves upon. And then that heart dictates to the limbs what it should be doing. For it is the malakul jawarih. It is the king of the limbs. It is the malikul jawarih. It is the king of the limbs. So that's why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had told us that, that taqwa is here in the heart. And taqwa brothers and sisters in Islam. Taqwa brothers and sisters in, in Islam is doing what Allah commands you to do. min Allah, Based on guidance from Allah. And to stay away from all that Allah has prohibited you from. Based on the Nord and min Allah. Based on guidance and light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa ta'zimu sha'a'ir al deen and magnifying the symbols and signposts of the religion, magnifying the prayer, magnifying the fasting, magnifying the scholars, magnifying the righteous lands, the, the, that we, the, the holy lands that we have in Islam, magnifying the masajid, magnifying the love of the Muslim ummah in the heart, magnifying the commandments of Allah in our hearts. Magnifying what Allah and His Messenger prohibit us from in our hearts. For this is taqwa. Because wallahi, man yattaqillah wa qahullahu min kulli shar. That whoever truly fears Allah, Allah will protect that person from every evil. Allah will protect them from every harm. For taqwa is the greatest medium to get one to deal with what all difficulties. Wa man as Allah Ta'ala says, wa man yattaqillah yaj'allahu makhraja. That whoever fears Allah, Allah will make a way out for him no matter what the situation is. But he has to be with that condition of fearing Allah. And Allah will provide for him from places he did not expect or even consider. That whoever fears Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make for him in his affairs facilitation and ease. This is what taqwa provides. And Allah make a way out in all circumstances. But the condition is you have to have taqwa. وَإِن تَتَّقُوا اللَّهَ يَجَعَلْ لَكُمْ فُرْقَانًا That Allah Ta'ala says that if you fear Allah, He will make a criteria in your life for what's from distinguish what's right from what's wrong. وَيُكَفِّرَ عَنْ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ And He will expiate from you your sins. وَيُعْذَمْ and he will magnify for you your rewards. For taqwa is the most tremendous means to stay firm on, on upon the truth. 
You want to stay firm, have taqwa of Allah, number one. Secondly, to stay firm on the truth, brothers and sisters in Islam, is ilzam wa shukra lillah. To stay adherent to gratitude to Allah for what he has bestowed upon you of bounties. And that requires to always pay attention to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed upon you of bounties. To always reflect on what Allah has given you of bounties. To stay firm and realize that you having gratitude and adhering to gratitude. Know that Allah promises every servant that is grateful to him, that is obedient to him. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that he will increase that person. He will give him more of what he has. He will increase that individual in his situation. This is a promise of Allah. To adhan Allah. Allah Ta'ala has made this promise. La in shakartum la azidannakum. That if you are grateful, I will truly, verily, indeed. All these emphasis is in Arabic. I will truly, indeed, that we don't say in English. La la mitawki la azidannakum nun tawki mushaddada li tashdeed tawkida. Hunaka thalath taqidat. That Allah Ta'ala says on a word, and, and He said, I shall indeed increase you. In the word increasing you in the Arabic language, He mentioned three forms of, 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 of in, on the word increasement. He had three forms of emphasis, three forms, so that we will know and understand that if you are grateful, He will truly indeed, to all manifest levels, increase you. For this is the promise of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore that means the servant of Allah It is incumbent that he be grateful And where is the shukr? The shukr is in the qalb It is in the heart of the servant It is in the heart of the servant And it plays out on his limbs And it plays out off of his tongue When the individual, as we said before Gives you something You feel gratefulness in your heart It pushes you to say thank you off your tongue To even shake their hand And embrace them with your limbs Because of the gratitude that you feel For what this individual has done for you and likewise, Allah Ta'ala commands us to show gratitude towards Him. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala commands us to show gratitude to Him with these limbs, with that heart, and with your tongue. As Allah Ta'ala has told us, فَكُلُوا مِمَّا رَزَقَكُمُ اللَّهِ And eat from that which Allah has provided for you. حَلَالًا طَيِّبًا That which is permissible and wholesome. وَاشْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ and show gratitude to the bounties of Allah in kuntum iyahu ta'budun. If it is Him alone that you worship. So Allah directly connected to ibadah, worship, gratitude. So therefore, feel this gratefulness in your heart. Feel this gratitude within your heart for what Allah Ta'ala has given you. And the only way we can show gratitude is ikhrajul hawli wal quwwa min nafsika. وَوَضْعُهُ فِي يَدِ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ It's by you removing any capability in your mind, in your i'tiqad, in your belief, in your creed, and you remove any capability or strength from yourself and to give it all to Allah. And to realize that Allah has given you wasn't from your efforts, but it was from Allah because He gave you the effort, because He gave you the capability, He gave you the qudra, the capability. Well, he gave you the irada, the want. If Allah stole away from you your want, but left you with capability, it's not possible for you to do anything. No matter how much capability you have, if you don't want it, you won't strive for it. Likewise, that if Allah was to steal away from you, your ability to do a thing, and He left with you the want and passion for something, but you don't have the ability, you will never be able to establish that thing. But it is Allah who gave you your irada, or your kudra, your want, your passion for something, and your capability. And in order for you, brothers and sisters in Islam, to accomplish that thing, you need this from Allah. So realize whatever you got is not from you. It's not from your capability. And say to, your, say to yourself, after thinking about what Allah has bestowed upon you of Iman, of belief, what Allah has bestowed upon you of the Kitab, the Book of Allah, and guiding you towards it, to believe it's the final book and the final guidance. Believe that it is the key to success of man. 
ask yourself after realizing this bounty from Allah, what did I do to deserve this guidance? When we look around us all the time and we're surrounded by people who hate the book of Allah or don't even know the book of Allah or people who hate Islam, who hate the messenger of Allah when you love the messenger of Allah. You have people who hate the Adhan when you love the Adhan. Ask yourself, what did I do to be guided? What did I do to love Allah? And this will make you be grateful. This will make you strive to show gratitude. Be qalbin hadir with a heart that is present. Mutashakir, that is grateful. Thanking Allah. Thanking Him who blessed you the ability to come in the darkness of the night to pray Fajr in the masjid. Who, what did I deserve to be granted this ability? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what, what have I done to deserve to be guided to the truth? What do I have done to be granted the ability to hear? What have I done to be deserving the ability to see? When there's those who cannot see, when there's those who cannot hear, what have I done to deserve the bounty of having healthy skin when there's others with sick skin? What have I done to deserve the bounty to have a vehicle when others do not? What have I done? Do not look at it's because of your capability. Because if you think that, you will use it for what Allah has harrama alayka has prohibited you from. But if you look at it, I got this from Allah, then you will stand to use it for what pleases Allah, what earns his, his pleasure and contentment. That's why Allah Ta'ala says, Wala in shakartum la azidannakum, that if you are truly grateful, I will increase you. That's if you're truly grateful. He will, in, he will indeed increase you, brothers and sisters in Islam. So gratitude to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is from the greatest means that will draw you closer to Allah. The believers were so grateful during the time of the Prophet to Allah and seeing what Allah reflecting in this manner of what they have and removing capability and strength from themselves and putting it in the hands of Allah and only with Allah. Whatever good they have, they don't see themselves worthy of it, but only Allah saw them as worthy of it. So that makes them grateful to Allah. And then they would say, as Allah revealed the ayah in, this, in relation to this, that the believers say, Alhamdulillah, alladhi hadana li hada wa ma kunna li nahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. They say all praise is due to Allah, the one who guided me to this way. For if it wasn't for Allah, I would never be guided. If it wasn't for Allah, I would never be guided. But that has come from a heart that is present, a heart that is feeling the gratefulness of what Allah has given it. So it shows gratitude. They say all praise is due to Allah, the one who has guided me to this way of life. And if it wasn't for him, we would not be guided. For this is the characteristic of the believer. He, he has this ability and this is the greatest means to help you stay firm upon the deen of Allah. These are the individuals whom Allah Ta'ala says about them. You to Allah who ladina amanu bi qawli thabit fil hayat dunya wa fil akhirah. These are those who Allah has made firm those who believe whom Allah has made firm upon them the word of firmness, meaning qawlu la ilaha illallah saying la ilaha, the statement la ilaha illallah saying it and living it Allah give them firmness upon this word give them firmness upon living it for this believer sama'i qawli la ilaha illallah ka bushratin li qalbi hearing this, the statement la ilaha illallah is a glad tiding to his heart it's a irahatun li qalbi. It is a coolness to his heart and relaxation. Whereas the one who's not grateful, that word has no weight in their heart. That statement has no power upon their limbs in effect. Whereas the one who's grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he knows Allah has guided him. And he always asks, Man ana, tas'alu nafsik da'im. Man ana, ask yourself all the time, Who am I? Who am I? Why I deserve this? What I've done to get this? Let me show more gratitude so he don't steal it away from me. Let me show more appreciation so he won't take it away from me. Because when you're not obedient to Allah, when you're not grateful to Allah, you make your own interpretation of Islam. Because you think you're bestowing Allah a bounty by you practicing Islam. And Allah warned us of this. يَمُنُّونَ عَلَيْكَ أَنْ أَسْلَمُوا they think they've been storing a bounty upon you, Muhammad, that they have accepted Islam. Qul, say to them, La tamunu alayya islamakum. You have not bestowed no bounty upon me in accepting Islam. 
They think they're giving you a bounty, Muhammad. That they came to Islam. بَلْ اللَّهَ يَمُنُّ عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ هَدَاكُمْ لِلْإِيمَانِ but rather say to them, Allah has, rather Allah has bestowed the bounty upon you and guiding you to Iman. In kuntum sadiqeen. If you are truthful in your claim of faith. For Allah says this. How many of us live our life treating our deen like we're giving Allah a favor? Like Allah is not ghaniyun, hamidun, ghaniyun anil alameen. Treating this deen and treating your worship like Allah is not the one free of all need. Like we're not the one impoverished in need of him. He will leave you of this your attitude until death comes to you. And the regret after death, la tanfa, la dama tu ba'd al maut la tanfa, wal hasra tu ba'd al maut la tanfa. Regret, sorrow, don't benefit after death. It benefits now when you feel regret and it pushes you to correct. When you feel sadness and it pushes you to gratitude. When you reflect over the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters in Islam, realize وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ Allah. As Allah says, it's not with you of any bounty. Allah said, it's not with you of any type of bounty. Any. Any. He used the nakira. He used the indefinite article. He didn't say an ni'mah. He said, مَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ He didn't say, مَا بِكُمْ مِنَ النِعْمَةِ <laughs> He said, whatever is with you of his bounty, from in Allah, it is from Allah. So if you want to use it for the wrong reason, you want to use it for the haram, go right ahead. If I mash it, for in naka to fariku, do whatever you want, because you're going to separate from it. What tell Allah, and you're going to have to meet to Allah. And you're going to have to answer for your choices. You're going to ask the answer for what you even be left, but your, your intentions. Because that day, يوم توب السرائر, that all secrets will be open and put to test. So fix it now. So it's important to show gratitude to Allah. And there's nothing, brothers and sisters, that steals away from you. Gratitude or steals away from you being on the truth. As the ulama have said, ليس البلاء That there is no trial or two tribulation. ينتهي بالعبد That falls upon the slave of Allah إلا Except It will lead to him to having shaka, to misery, وَالْعَنَا And hardships and difficulties in life. مثل غفلة الشكر لله Like being negligent and heedless to show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you want to stay firm on the truth. Reflect. Use your brain. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to wake up in the middle of the night every night and sit on the edge of his bed and say the ayah from the Quran. Where Allah ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابِ النَّارِ This is the first statement came out from Muhammad's mouth when he woke up in the middle of the night. The ayah from Ali Imran when Allah described the believers, rarely those who remember Allah standing, sitting, and laying on their sides and they ponder and reflect over the creations of the heaven and earth and says, oh my Lord, you have not created none of this in vain. Glory to you and far from the perfection of you. I beg you to protect us and save us from the fire. the Muhammad This is how the messenger of Allah was when he woke up in the morning. Are you like this when you wake up in the morning? Oh, the first thing coming to your mind is that job. The first thing that comes to your mind is that money. The first thing coming to your mind is the beauty in your dunya, whatever you have. Or is it pondering over the greatness of Allah? Because none of that would be with you. Be without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah ta'ala and you thabbitna ala al-haq. We ask Allah to make us firm upon the truth. Wa yuhabbit ilayna shukra, ni'amah. And we ask Allah to bestow upon us the, 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 the gratitude of his bounties by giving him ziyadat al-ta'ah, increasement of obedience, wa bu'dan al-ma'asi, and distance from disobedience. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.
بسم الله والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب تبارك وتعالى ويرضى وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى كل من استنى بهداه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد آمين Thirdly and finally from the things that keeps us firm upon the truth is by working by all of the causes that Allah has given us to achieve guidance in our life to achieve guidance in our life and there's no means that is greater to help you achieve guidance than seeking knowledge of the religion than seeking knowledge of the book of Allah than memorizing the Quran and reading the interpretation of the Quran and reflecting over it and how it applies to your affairs in your daily life for nothing affects you and has the ability to keep you upon firmness and keep you upon gratitude and keep you upon the taqwa of Allah than seeking knowledge of what taqwa of Allah is what gratitude to Allah is this is why Allah Ta'ala says وَلَعَصَمْ He swears, He says, and by time so Allah is swearing by the whole dunya all time frame from the beginning of time to the last of time of this earth إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْمِ Verily mankind is upon ruin and destruction every one of them, no exceptions except who he gave an exception meaning everyone is going to be ungrateful as the shaitan says that, that that you will see most of them they will not be shakirin they will not be grateful to you oh Allah and shaitan said that I will lead astray all of them I will lead astray every single one of them except your servants who are sincere to you ya Allah and Allah Ta'ala says, everyone is ruined and destroyed illa ladina amanu, except those who believe. That's hidayah, as guidance. That's learning the deen of Allah. Wa'amilu salihat, and those who do righteous deeds, meaning those individuals who practice what they learned of iman and of the deen. And those individuals, Allah Ta'ala give them ziyadah to hidayah. That's what righteous deeds would lead to. Wa tawasu bil haqq. And Allah says, and they mutually order each other with the truth. Because of them becoming guided. And guidance being filled up. Them being filled up with guidance. It made them call to the thing that they've been guided to. They want to see other people guided. And they mutually advise each other with the truth. That does nothing but increasing you in guidance Because when you teach what you know You understand more You understand more The more you teach what you understand The greater you understand And this is the sunnah of Allah لِكُلِّ مَنْ قَامَ بِدَعْوَةِ إِلَى مَا عَلِمَ وَعَمِلَ Whoever stands to call to what he knows and what he practices For that is the key to the success of this ummah, brothers and sisters We want to fix our scholars We want to fix our affairs in our home Live sort of till asr Learn knowledge, then practice the knowledge you learn, and only call to that which you know, and practice. And then be patient with the harm that happens to you when doing so. And we end the khutbah with this very point. One of this was how the uh, deen were like. The leaders of this religion, they lived sort of to the asr, case in point. One time, Imam, uh, Imam al jawzi a man, he was a man who used to teach the Muslims Tens and thousands of Muslims used to come to his durus. The ummah was a different ummah. It wasn't like today with five or six people in the masjid coming to learn his deen. Back then, there used to be thousands of people. And ulama, the scholars of Islam, were the superstars of this ummah. Not the basketball players or the actors. The most wickedest of the people. No, the most righteous were considered the stars. Imam Bukhari would enter the city of Medina. I mean, when he went into he one time, one city he went to, the mayor and the people met him like a parade and gave him a gift. This is what we do to Kim Kardashian, that evil woman. These are the, we honor the wickedest of the people. So this one day, Sheikh Ibn Jawzi was given a class and thousands would come to his class. A man walks up to him and says to him, Sheikh, I am a slave and I'm owned by such and such and such and such. 
and he comes to your class. I will I beg of you to give a talk on the virtues of freeing slaves so that he can free me. Because he will free me if he hear you talk about it. So Ibn Jawzi, he thought about it, he said, okay. So weeks went past, months went past, almost a year went past. And then he comes out and gives this tremendous lecture on the virtues of freeing slaves. And when he gives the lecture, it was no one there except that they freed their slaves. So this man comes back to him afterwards and says, Alhamdulillah, barakallahu feek, wa barakallahu alayk, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah bless him and grant him success. Verily, I'm free. Yeah, he freed me. He said, but I have to ask you, why did you wait so long to talk about it? He said, well, since I had the knowledge about that, first I had to save me some money. Then I had to go buy me a slave and then free him so I can talk about it. So sort of to the Asa brothers and sisters in Islam, knowledge is first. Then acting upon the knowledge you learn from the people of knowledge. And then calling to what you know and practice. Don't call to what you don't know and don't practice. That is how the deen becomes corrupted and the Muslims become to corrupted. When you're telling people to do that which you don't do. But learn and practice. And call to what you practice. Ibn Jawazi waited till he had practiced that sunnah. He already had the knowledge. Then he could speak about it. And that's what took him so long, so many months to almost a year to purchase a save enough money to buy a slave so he can experience that experience and free a slave so he can talk about it. But this is success. For verily your children, when they see you practicing what you tell them to do, they're going to, be, they're going to follow it. Because they don't look at what you say, they look at what you do. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to guide us and make beloved to us iman and practicing of this deen. Wa aqeem salah. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله